It's very, very well. Actually, probably on a daily basis. Just ask Violetta. I embarrass myself, but <laughs> knowing, sir, that we are going to have you in studio again, the greatest of all time, the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Um, I wore my official Ric Flair T-shirt. <laughs> all right. Okay. Is that I, all? No, it's not all. I also have my Ric Flair sneakers. All right. And I also have my Ric Flair socks. There you go. So I had to make sure <laughs> that I represented you, sir, and, and everything that you're doing. And, man, Celebrity Mint now, like, every time that we have you in as a guest, every time that we have you here on Busted Open, and I always say that you're more relevant now than probably at any other point in your career, and that's saying something because, like I said, you're the greatest of all time. Celebrity Mink creates first precious metal legal tender trading coins with you, sir, the nature boy, Ric Flair. Talk yeah. about that. Well, I'm very excited about it. The project was brought to me by Ryan Fitterman. Fitterman Sports Group, largest sports memorabilia company in the world that I'm aware of. And uh, <laughs> they introduced me to the people at Celebrity Mint, and they presented the idea of doing the coin. They're go. Uh, they're actually gold and silver. Uh, the coins are go are silver, uh, but the cards we don't have any with us right now. Uh, the first uh, first uh, stop grabbed all the merch. <laughs> really? <laughs> we, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> that's all right. That's I think okay. We got, we got. Is that yeah, one of them? That's one of them. Yeah, there um, we go. Yeah. Let me yeah, see. Yeah, they're that. real. They're real. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Wow. Yeah, that's silver and. Uh, Oh my God! Yeah, look at feel, that, feel, Dave. Feel the weight. I know it's it's really significant. Yeah, and that's they, amazing. They are a. It's like a coin. I mean, it's a collectible card to, with precious to, metal that's legal tender. To, to walk in their uh, their building in Celebrity Mint in Houston is like walking into Fort Knox. Wow! I've never seen more beautiful jewelry and stuff in the world. They've got, yeah, you know, you know, assets in excess. I won't give the number because. <laughs> they don't want it to, but yeah. If I'm blown away by it, I'm blown away. <laughs> I've seen a lot of stuff, but nothing like that. Can you believe the the merchandising opportunities that have that have come of Ric Flair I in know. the last like five to ten years? I it's know. just like it's it's well, you know, it's a lot of it. I'm gonna, I'm not saying it, not to kid his ass, but uh, Ryan Fitterman, you know, jumped in at a very crucial time. Yep. And uh, it, it's just growing and growing and growing, and then along came the cannabis, and now the the fuel, and this opportunity right now with the coin is is as big a thing as I've been involved in it. And probably. it's available exclusively through eBay and CelebrityMint.com. Again, CelebrityMint.com. Yes. Yeah, this tomorrow, is fantastic. Tomorrow morning we launch at 10:30 at the Comic Con, and uh, looking forward to having a great day. Have you uh, I'll ever? I'll be able to afford drinks tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I I, I, I know I, I know your wife has a hard time letting you hang around. You know, I I know the scoop on that. Oh really? <laughs> But there was, and I, and I. Doesn't it feel good uh, yeah. at this stage in your life to still be a bad influence? Yeah. Doesn't yeah, that feel does, good? Yeah. No, but this is, and, and I, 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 I've shared this story on Busted Open before, Sam, but we were in Chicago. Yeah. And, and my wife and I are in bed, we're sleeping, and my phone rings, yeah. and it's a, and it's a private <laughs> number. And I was like, oh my, and I answer it, and it's the nature boy, uh, Ric yeah. Flair. And yeah. it's Ric Flair saying, LaGreca, <laughs> where are you? And he's like, I'm at, unfortunately, he wasn't at the same hotel that yeah. I was at. Yeah. But uh, like, you're lucky. I, you know what? You know, I, I'd have got your room number and your key. <laughs> Violetta was lucky that that was at a different hotel. I mean, you know, Rick, I mean, we've had you on uh, before. You are, without a doubt, the greatest of all time. Thank you. Um, it's so many moments and memories rushed to my head. And, you know, they're still making documentaries, still making movies. As a matter of fact, there's a, a new movie that's opening up in December, The Iron Claw on the Von Eric yeah, family. Yeah. And, I, and they show you, you know, mm. your character, your personality in the yeah, ring. I, I was a big part of that, of that unfortunate. It really is. A, it's a tragic story. Yeah. I saw the trailer yesterday, but it, you, you really had to be there. I mean, it showed Michael Hayes and everybody. And, yeah. The Freebirds and I were right in the middle of that, the whole thing. Tragic. But but talk about that moment. I'm sure that moment's going to be a big part of the movie when you wrestled Kerry Von yeah. Erich at Texas Stadium. Yeah, well, you know what happened? Is nobody anticipated um, <clears throat> the heat, right? So they, they ran it at 12. Instead of running at 8 o'clock at night, 
they were worried about the weather, they ran it at one o'clock in the afternoon. And it was 105 degrees. And I don't know if you remember the story, they were carrying people out right. on stretchers from um, um, dehydration sure. and that, right? sunstroke. And, and the, got on the mat, the mat cover was, when I got in the ring with Kerry, and we were last, you know, um, the, the, the mat cover was still, like, you just couldn't lay on it. Does that make sense? It was that hot. Yeah, like a and skillet. And they kept changing it. And they weren't prepared, but they would have done all 65,000. But we, I think we had like 52, 53, but nobody anticipated the heat. But think about that. That's in a, at a time when... A 82. Yeah, like in... No, 80, 80, uh, 84. 84, yeah. But think about that. That's at a time when... Um, that's not a WrestleMania where this is a national no, product. No, I know. This is just world-class championship well, yeah, wrestling exa- that's extremely regional. Exactly. It was a huge gig, yeah. Yeah, that's one of those things I think people really do need to keep in mind because they go, well, after WrestleMania, they took it out of the, out of the you know, bars and tiny venues and they brought it into <laughs> stadiums and no, said there were 50,000 yeah, people and I'll tell you what else in Reunion Arena which was the old the, now the, they have the American Airlines Arena we sold out that Reunion Arena every every three months too I mean we were doing big business in Texas yeah that was just one town wow and Paul Bosch was selling out in uh, in uh, Houston. Houston we were selling out in San Antonio I think Ed Venue held 8,000 and we're, basically anything we did there for about eight years with the Von Erichs was sold out. Eight years. Well, yeah, I remember, I wasn't one time I had to beat Mike. <laughs> little Mike, right? I had to beat him in 10 minutes to get a shot at Kerry, right? Or, 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 or no, if I couldn't beat him in 10 minutes, Kerry got to wrestle me at Christmas and reunion. So the kid was so hot, they wanted me to beat the shit out of him. I said, you guys got this all wrong. <laughs> I, t- I took a blade and I had <laughs> went to the 10 minute mark. He had the claw on me and I was going to submit. <laughs> and we still sold out. <laughs> Gary. I mean, he only weighed 160 pounds, but they, they, he was a Von Eric. Right. I mean, it was, re- it was like wrestling Jack Veneno and Santa Domingo. A uh, boom. Right? <laughs> Put the claw on me, kid. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Unbelievable. <laughs> One, two foot over the rope. <laughs> bing, bing. The bell rings. So you're, so you're in. <laughs> they carried him out. <laughs> so you're in the ring. You were in the ring with David Von Erich. You were in the ring with Kevin them. Von Erich. And, and, Never and obviously Chris. Carrie. Every, everybody but Chris and, of course, Jack that. They got electrocuted. Yeah, this which is, which was, for in your mind, was the best of the Von Erics. Well, the best worker was David, David, by far. Yeah, and David, I never knew. I was around David a lot, and they had sent David out. He was working in Carolina a little bit, a lot in Florida for Eddie, grooming him for that spot. And uh, David really had the skill. I carried it. It had the amazing athletic ability. They all did, but Kerry just, you know, I had to. You never knew which carry, which carry was going to show up, and, that was, and that's mm. what's sad. Sure. Mm, There's yeah. a kid that could bench press 500 pounds any day of the week. He was like one of the top 10 discus throwers in the country. You know, he wasn't breaking yeah, 200 setting. feet. I mean, but at the University of Houston, I mean, unbelievable. But he just, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm went through the same thing with my son. The, the, the father was just in denial. We would go. I'd go to Fritz. I'd say, Fritz. Me and Mantell and David Manning. Oh, no, you guys got it wrong. I mean, what is it? Is it? Are you surprised that to find out now, right, living in that 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 was a forever thing? That the stuff that you were doing in the early in the mid '80s mm-hmm. is stuff because I'm sure when you're doing it, and even ten years removed from it, you're not thinking that stuff is forever. That stuff is tonight. This stuff is. But we're sitting here in 2023. Yeah, mm-hmm. A24 is putting out a movie. We're talking yeah. about it on Sirius yeah. XM. Like, yeah, and the movie's actually 20 years too late. You know what I mean? Because unfortunately, of course, wrestling historians like you guys, sure, they all know the Von Erichs. A lot of people don't even know who the Von Erichs are. Right. So it's kind of like I mean, this should have been done 20 years ago, and for whatever reason it wasn't. But really, in, in wrestling, I'm finding out, and I'm sure you you guys live it every day. What's old? <laughs> and now is is damn a lot of it's new if we're if we're lucky enough and li- still alive to be part of it because wrestling is you know Tony's got three shows going now and WWE is running wild again I mean <laughs> Monday Night Football has hurt them a little bit but SmackDown's still doing two million people it's, 
Wrestling is wrestling. People love it. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great time. And I like what Sam just said because especially with your career in that era in pro wrestling, which to me is the golden era, you never know what's going to stick and stay. And, and I brought in like a program, and it's probably just another night for you, mm-hmm. but this is the first time that the NWA and the AWA was at the Meadowlands yeah. in New Jersey, and you wrestled Harley Race, and you knew Harley Race yeah. so well. That match, which was the main event that night in, in front of a sold-out Meadowlands crowd, one of the greatest matches yeah. that I've ever seen. Yeah. And you probably had the greatest match of your career every night yeah. during your career, especially <laughs> especially against somebody like Harley Race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harley, nobody like him. He got. I just did a, his impersonation because they were asking me about Buddy Rogers, right? And there's two stories. The one I tell Buddy, I tell women that I don't know that I, what would Eric call me that? <laughs> <laughs> the real version is I took it from Buddy Rogers. And, but Bo and, Derek and, gave and, it. And, yeah. And, and, and I, yeah, I got two versions. <laughs> the, the X and the PG. So, the, so, uh, so Harley said, Flair took Rogers' gimmick. <laughs> to a whole new level. <laughs> Only that... one Harley Race boy. <laughs> Trust me, if he was around today, <laughs> they'd still be kissing his ass in the locker room. <laughs> there would be no argument about the finish. Because <laughs> they talk about yeah. legit tough guys. Like Harley was the real deal, oh, right? <laughs> yeah. No kidding. You know, when he thought he was going to jail you know he drove his 911 Porsche into a concrete medium right you know that right no 100 comment. miles an hour and live I, th- I thought I was going to go to jail over that boating accident remember yeah that they killed somebody but and he actually won the court case but when he thought he was going to jail he didn't he, you're not putting Harley Race in jail he drove his 911 Jeez. into a concrete <laughs> beam at 103 miles an hour and, oh my and god put, and he got out of it <laughs> brushed <laughs> the dirt off his shoulder yeah, yeah. Wow. Like he was tough, yeah. He's the real deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Harley, my great story is Kurt Henning. <laughs> and so I'm being Kurt, and Harley right. What do you want to do for a finish tonight, Mr. Hayes? <laughs> <laughs> What's your finish, kid? Drop kick off the top rope. I'll move. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got, I got another one for you that you'll love. The New York fans will love this. So when Hunter first, when that Triple H Hunter first came into WCW, Harley was managed in Leon, right, uh, Vader. Yeah. And uh, so he wanted to meet Harley, so I said, uh, Harley, this is a, 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 a Paul Levesque, we're gonna call him a Triple H, and he's a real big, real wrestler, big wrestling fan, big, big fan of yours, and just wanted to introduce you in the dressing room. Harley looked up at him and said, nice to meet you, kid. And as he walked away, he <laughs> He goes, nice to meet you, Mr. Reese. <laughs> and he says, who trained you? Killer Kowalski. He's the shit. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was the shit. <laughs> Leon, you big fat baby, get up. <laughs> the way you used to talk to Leon. Oh, yeah, big God. fat baby, get up and go to whining. Amazing. Oh. Amazing. I mean, think about it now. Like, how much has this world of pro wrestling changed? Like, from when. Oh. It's, it, but it's for the better. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> the guys over there asking me where I'd be right now, but when I'm my prime, I'd be in Rikers. <laughs> Do, and when you guys would be interviewing me, <laughs> he's on busted over, guys. Can you hear him in the cell down there? <laughs> <laughs> interviewing through a collective so, call. Yeah, yeah. yeah hello. <laughs> but I think, like, and, and going back to what Sam said earlier about these moments and matches, like now with YouTube, like you, fans can just yeah. Google like any kind of a match. We had we had Lex Luger on earlier yeah. uh, in the week, and he was talking about the infamous cage match he had with Bruiser Brody. Yeah, mm, sure. Bruiser wasn't selling, and yeah. Lex just hightailed yeah. it yeah. right out of the cage. Was wait, you've had some classic matches? The one in St. Louis with, with Bruiser. Brody, yeah, yeah. Was was he difficult to work with? No, he just he just <laughs> made you very aware of the fact that he was there. Now I had actually great matches with him, but he liked me. 
Right. Okay. Right. It was his choice. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, you, you know, back then you have to remember, and people that takes educated people like you to understand this, the only thing that they saw in Japan were the wrestling magazines. There was no TV show over there, and the right. wrestling magazine. That's why those guys Hanson and Brody wouldn't. They were making their money in Japan. Sure. Yeah. I and mean, those, those guys back then were making twenty grand a week <sighs> on forty week tours, guys. I'm serious. 30, 30, 30 week tours for sure, but twenty grand a week apiece. Uh, that's so, nuts. and that's why it was so. They they were hard to do business with here. Sure, and maybe it wasn't uh, hard for wrestlers to do business with Brody, but a few promoters might have had yeah. had their issues. Yeah, you know, but he didn't mean it. To me, he was a very he was a great guy. He he called me Ricky. I'd say what what, what he, <laughs> there here's Harley again. <laughs> You tell Brody that you're going over too straight. <laughs> Where's the keel? Hey, Frank, what do you want to do? <laughs> He's smoking a joint. I'll get back to you, Ricky. <laughs> Harley on the hall. What did he say? He said he'd get back to me. I told you to tell him. <laughs> you go tell him. <laughs> oh, my God. So when you look at locker rooms leader, like locker room leaders, obviously yeah. Harley was one. Modern day, closer to this Undertaker. Yeah. A, 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 like in that same vein, right? Yeah, like yeah you but did, Undertaker is a, is a leader because not, not only is he a great guy. Right. He's respected. I mean, I, I, I'd say across the board, I don't think I've seen anybody have the level of respect from everybody, not only because of his skill, but because of the kind of guy he was. And yeah. I mean, that, that's a different kind of leader. He, had, but he wasn't like going to start in fights and shit like that. I mean, Harley, <laughs> I tell you, Harley wanted everybody in the world to know he was a world champion. He'd walk into a bar, he'd knock all the coins off the pool table and say, I got the winner, problem. I mean, Harley, can we chase them girls and drink a beer? I mean, come on. <laughs> then, then, then he reaches over and looks at the girl and goes like this and bites the beer cup off, right? I mean, <laughs> that's romantic, Harley. <laughs> that had to impress her. That's going to be a great French kiss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, no, he was, I can out drink a beer. I mean, no problem. You want to arm wrestle? I mean, Harley, can we just relax? <laughs> was was uh, Wahoo McDaniel like that as well? Wahoo was pretty tough, too, yeah. Yeah. Real tough. But Wahoo was a, not, I mean, not aggressive. I mean, Harley just won. <laughs> he was the world champion. I got news for you. It's like he never took the damn title off. <laughs> He was a, he was great. Yeah. Do you think wrestling needs a little bit more of that? Right. Where where we're so in tune with the fact that it's entertainment now. Do you well, think he was entertaining? Him, but, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it sounds. Yeah. I'm entertained yeah. just listening. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no. He, I mean, the guys loved him. He was just. He was. You know. It was, he just. He was just Harley Race. Yeah. I mean, when you start when you're 13 years old, but he and Race started when they were 13 years old. Wow. I mean, you know, it was seventh grade education. You come up, you know what he did? You know what he did? He drove Happy Farmer Humphrey around wow. for two years to the carnivals. Oof. A lot of people don't know that. That's how Harley broke into business. That's amazing. And, and, and maintained his hygiene and all that. I mean, you can give me a break, you know? That's, so he came up Talk tough. about paying dues. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Oh, God. I mean, we, 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 when I first started hanging around him, right? Uh, we were me, me and him and Ray Stevens, and, and we're in some little town in Nebraska, and we have to be in Denver. This is when I went to AWA, right? Harley is AWA as well. So we, Harley said, "We're going, we're going over the mountain tonight." And Ray said, "Let's just stay and drink tonight in the motel." Now nah, we're going over the mountain tonight. <laughs> so they bought a bottle, two bottles of Jack, and a bottle of a case of beer. And I'm in the back seat and. And every time they hand me the jack, and Harley turned the light on. Don't be not keeping up, kid. That's not <laughs> how you stay in the business. That's nice. Tell him, Ray. Well, halfway there, Ray is going, God damn it. Slow down, Harley. He's driving 100, <laughs> 100 miles an hour in a snowstorm in the mountains on a two lane road. He just, it's the way he lived. <laughs> oh, my God. It's I incredible. love it. Rick, I could talk to you for, for three hours. Oh. Uh, uh, but we got. But speaking of coins, celebritymint.com. Of course. Trying to do the transition. Yeah. Yeah. New York yeah. Comic Con, 10 30. Harley Race yeah. Love Coins. 10 30 again. Uh, Celebrity Mint creates the first precious metal legal tender trading coin 
with the great nature boy, Ric Flair. It's uh, through eBay and, like I said, celebritymint.com, and you're going to be... And thankful York- to Fitterman Sports. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, right. <laughs> woo! Um, Ryan, I just, woo! I just said woo in front of Ric Flair. I apologize. I don't uh, <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yeah. But, you know, uh, New York Comic Con tomorrow where yes. you can unveil this. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm very excited to be part of it. And, and congrats, too, on this. On this, I feel like there's another new wave of popularity coming mm-hmm. your way from doing, like, Theo Vaughn's podcast yeah, yeah. and shows like that just because, like, then Theo... Nobody, nobody wants to hear the truth. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I was in rehab, but I didn't I certainly didn't fall into the guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't have, I didn't have a gold coin like one of these. I might not have flipped it in, but <laughs> <laughs> the coin they gave me, I put it on and bought two beers with <laughs> I, I, this one buy me a damn liquor store <laughs> uh rick flair rick as you know i love you you're my hero Thank you. you know and i'm trying to catch up i'm on marriage number three we'll get there um <laughs> Are you but, on marriage number three? Uh, what's that Are you on number three i'm on this is number three uh, you're, is a number rookie, three. you're a rookie <laughs> <laughs> he's still Hell, green wait when, when, when is he coming to town tonight <laughs> She's no. trying to get me at number five. No. <laughs> the the one the only for thing about well, Wendy, she's got more money than I do. Uh, <laughs> she's got what? deep pockets <laughs> like Fitterman. 